Lesson 3. Packed with the Jews and some reconnoitering parties. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma akhrijna min zulumatil waham wa akrimna binuril faham. Allahumma hafta alayna abwaaba rahmatik wa anshur alayna khazaina ulumik. برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Welcome to lesson three, packed with the Jews and some reconnoitering parties of module three, prophetic period in Medina of the course on سيرة النبي. In the previous lesson, we discussed. Arabia's prevailing political conditions. Act with the Jews. The Holy Prophet not only welded the Ansar and the Muhajirun into one brotherhood, but he set himself to the task of establishing a stable society a commonwealth based on equality of rights and on the concept of universal humanity. Granting equality of status and rights as well as full freedom of religion and of conscience to the Jews, he invited them to enter into a pact with the Muslims. He drew up a charter which has been reproduced by the historian Ibn Hisham thus, in the name of the most merciful and the compassionate God, granted by Muhammad the Prophet to the believers, whether of Quraysh or of Yathrib, and all individuals of whatever origin who have made common cause with them, all these shall constitute one nation. And in our parlance, it means shall constitute one citizenship. Then, after regulating the payment of the dia or blood money by the various clans and fixing some wise rules regarding the private duties of Muslims among themselves, the document proceeds thus. The state of peace and war shall be common to all Muslims. None among them shall have the right of concluding peace with or declaring war against the enemies of his co-religionists. The Jews, the Jews shall, who enter into this covenant shall be protected from all insults and vexations. They shall have an equal right with their own people to our assistance and good offices. The Jews of the various branches of Auf, Najjar, Harith, Jashim, Tha'laba, Aus, and all others domiciled in Yathrib shall form with the Muslims one composite nation. They shall practice their religion as freely as the Muslims. The clients and allies of the Jews shall enjoy the same security and freedom. The guilty shall be pursued and punished. The Jews shall, enjoin, shall join the Muslims in defending Yathrib or Medina against all enemies. The interior of Yathrib shall be a sacred, sacred place for, for all those who accept this charter. The clients and allies of the Muslims and of the Jews shall be as respected as the principals. All Muslims shall hold in abhorrence anyone found guilty of a crime, injustice, or disorder. None shall uphold the culpable even if he may be his nearest in kinship. Then, after some other provisions regarding the internal management of the state, this extraordinary document concluded thus. All future disputes between those who accept this charter shall be finally referred after God to the Prophet. This document is now known as the Medina Charter or Constitution. 
For an in-depth analysis of this document, one may refer to The Covenant of Medina and the Inclusivist Islamic State by Zafar Bangas of the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought or ICII, uh, ICIT. The Jews of Medina accepted this pact. After some time, the neighboring Jew, Jewish tribes of Banu, Banu Nadir and Banu Quraida joined it too. But later events proved, but as later events proved, it was only expediency that had dictated this course of action to the Jews. There was no change of heart on their part, and they secretly nursed the same hostile feelings against the Aus and Khaz and the Khazraj as before and viewed the growing confederation of the Muslims with grave concern and animosity. In the course of time, they started taunting and abusing the Muslims, frequently quarreling with them and resorting to treachery and sedition. Some people of the Aus and Khazraj who had become lukewarm converts assisted them they are known as the munafiqun or hypocrites. These were headed by Abdullah ibn Ubay, who had his own designs to become the ruler of Medina, and together with the Jews, they become a constant source of danger to the newborn religion and to its adherents. The Jews who had business connections with the Quraysh of Mecca conspired with them to eradicate the infant religion before it assumed formidable proportions. As the head of the religion and a general in a time of almost continual warfare, the Holy Prophet was the guardian of the lives and liberty of the people. The very existence of the nascent religion was in serious peril. Islam preaches the brotherhood of mankind. It insists upon toleration of all religions and creeds. It enjoins kindness and compassion, but it does not preach monasticism, nor does it permit its followers to submit to the forces of disintegration. Harassment Being in league with the Jews and the Munafiqun, the Makkans started harassing the Muslims. Under the leadership of Khars ibn Jabir al-Fahri, they started raiding up to the very outskirts of Medina, destroying uh, fruit-bearing trees and carrying away flocks. News began pouring into Medina that the Makkans were allying with other tribes to launch a massive attack against the Muslims. Muhammad sent out small missions to these tribes to contract alliances and treaties. One of them entered into a treaty with the Banu Zamra. The terms of the treaty were as follows. This is the document of Muhammad, the messenger of God for Banu Zamra. Their lives and properties are safe. They, if they are attacked by anyone, they will be assisted except when they themselves fight against the religion. In return, they will come to the help of the Prophet when called upon by him. A similar pact was made with the Banu Majlaj at Dhul Ashira. The Quraysh had sent a threatening letter to Abdullah ibn Ubay, who was the chief of his tribe before the arrival of the Prophet. It says, you have given shelter to our man. You should either kill him or turn him out of Medina, or else we swear that we will attack you and killing all the males, we will capture and enjoy your women. For an in-depth analysis of such treaties entered into by the Holy Prophet, one may refer to power manifestations of the Sira examining the letters and treaties of the Messenger of Allah by Zafar Bangash. The attack was considered so eminent and the small band of Muslims was, was in such peril that the Prophet used to remain awake through the night. 
Ad-Darmi and Al-Hakim have recorded that when the Prophet and his companions came to Medina and the Ansar sheltered them, the Arabs decided to attack them. The Prophet's companions used to sleep holding to their weapons. some reconnoitering parties. The Qurayshites were extremely furious about Muhammad sleeping away from their hands, having made all preparations to kill him, as indicated in a previous lesson. The news that Islam was rapidly gaining hold in Medina did nothing to pacify their rage and enmity. Several times news reached Medina that they were planning to attack the Muslims. As a result, the Holy Prophet had to send out reconnoitering parties now and then to find out the designs and movements of the Quraysh and to watch the roads to prevent any sudden attack. All in all, except for one isolated incident in none of the numerous expeditions listed by Arab historians as Saraya was there and any skirmish, skirmish or a question of looting and plundering. They were sent out either to make alliances with neighboring tribes or they were reconnaissance patrols for news was reaching Medina that the Meccans might strike any time any day. So the next lesson, we will deal with the Battle of Badr and its consequences, inshallah. So for more similar lessons, subscribe to Wafering with Mansoor channel. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.